Welcome back to more Steel Division 2 Battle Group reviews. Today we'll be looking at the 184th Strel Kovi. This is one of the newest additions to this game. Let's just quickly hover over it and see what this is. So this is a rival division. It was a regular Soviet infantry division counting the feared female sniper Shanina as one of its serving members until her death in East Prussia in early 45. Damn. Well, we're going to be looking into that, and at the end of this, I'll be giving you guys a view of my own battle group that I built, and uh, you guys can copy it from the code in the description. So, let's dive into it. So, what do we have in the recon tab? We have a WLADP, just a motorbike with a machine gun. Nothing too special. I really don't like using these too much. We have a two-man recon team, a dozer here. And we can go for quite a few different types of vehicles, including a Rasvetka vehicle, which is a really nice 50 cal vehicle. We have the Mott Rasvetka with a PPSH and SVT. Comes in a lot of different varieties. We have the BA-10M, the Batmobile, over here with the 45mm um, cannon on top of it. 75mm penetration at 2000 meters range. That is actually pretty impressive. And it is really fast on and off-road. We have the Konaya Resvetka, 11-man recon team with PPSHs and Mosin-Nagans. Um, they only come in the student backers or the Foroshilovets vehicle. Um, you could even use this to like replenish your front line of infantry. We have the Katy Perrys, the Snay Perrys, so the big fucking triceps. Mosin-Nagans and the PPSH, and these guys, are re they're really good. These ladies, they just wreck your infantry. Last but not least, we have the Valentine 3. Very slow tank, a good hitting tank, 75 mil penetration on it. Um, but yeah, not the fastest ever, which is a big problem, that's for sure. In the infantry tab, we have NKVDs. These are four man assault squads with the PPSHs. They come in a wide variety of vehicles, so do choose which one you think will be useful for these. We have Saperis with a PPSH. Four of them with HE shells and also Panzerfausts, which is a really, really good assault engineer unit. Um, I would probably use these to help my frontline infantry, which is going to consist out of like things like Aftermachikis or Strelkis. Speaking of Strelkis, let's actually look at the tank, Tanko Desant Sneaky first. Um, assault squads, eight man PPSH team with smoke grenades definitely good at charging the enemy line and taking out whatever you can find really quickly and finally the Strelkis the PPSHs are lower than usual but we have more Mosinagans, guns we have a machine gun and we have an anti-tank grenade and together with the aftermachikis basically have everything from close range to mid-range to long range leaders on motorbikes <laughs> we also have the aftercomrotis the Aftermachikis, as I said earlier, with all of the PPSHs on the planet and anti-tank grenades. Good infantry to use. Once again, a lot of your infantry can be put into a wide variety of vehicles. We have Saperis. Good infantry in forests. Even better in towns because of the TNT that they carry. And good at mid-range encounters, but can also hold its own at close range due to those two PPSH-41s. What else do we have? So we have... Strelki DPs, Strelkis with a PTRD, 145 millimeter anti-tank rifle, very powerful actually, does a lot of criticals on tanks, like knocks, knocks out the gunner, damages the engine, destroys the transmission, you name it, sometimes even kills the entire crew. Um, so yeah, definitely get these um, DP units in your um, battle group, and DP stands for, you know what it stands for. We have the Strelki Kamroti, a leader Strelki three-man team or three-man squad. We have the Tanko Komroti, and finally we have the Sapri Komroti over here with the Panzerfaust and the PPSH and the SVT-40s. So a lot of good infantry, that's for sure. Like the Strelki DPs and the Aftermachikis and the Sapris, those guys can hold their own. They're like big squads as well. So in the tank tab, we have something very cool. We have the M5L. This looks like a Stewart. I think it is a Stewart. 37 mil M6 on it, 90 mil penetration, so pretty powerful. Two 30 cals on it as well. 40 mil, um, 40 percent accuracy on the gun. So actually a pretty good unit. Definitely putting this in the battle group, and it's really fast on and off road. We have the Valentine Combrotti, Valentine leader unit. We have the M3, M3S. Um, 
beast over here with two guns on it. We have the M5 and the early M3, a 37 and a 75 mil. I have no idea how this is going to play, but um, we're up for a surprise. And last but not least, we have this Valentine here with the longer barrel. And I think it also squeezes the rounds. I might be mistaken. But um, yeah, it's a six pounder, 57 mil. I don't think it's squeezed around, so just a long barrel, so higher velocity. 150 mil penetration on this big boy. In a support tab, we have flamethrower infantry. We have 50 mil mortars, although I don't think these stats are correct. It only says 500 meters range, so uh, I might be mistaken. For now, don't use them. We have the Maxim machine gun, 1000 meters range, decent rate of fire, not the best machine gun, but it's the only one we have really. We have the 76.2 millimeter infantry gun, really good at suppressing anything, even tanks. But the best thing that I found, um, like the best purpose of this, is to assault towns with it. If you're assaulting a town, have a few of these giving you fire support, and you can stun anything in that town. Supply trucks, commander infantry, and a commander M2 combat. In the anti-tank, we have a anti-tank rifle squad with the 14.5 millimeter PTRS and the PPSH. Definitely useful to use. They're, they're good. As I said, they give a lot of criticals. We have the 45mm anti-tank gun here with 100mm penetration on the APCR, 75mm on the AP rounds, and the accuracy also decreases by 5, and the rate of fire increases when you go for APCR. So you can't even turn off APCR if you're up against a lot of like half-tracks, for example, you don't want to waste the APCR rounds, and you want to have that high rate of fire of the AP rounds. You can do that. We also have the ZIS-3, the 76.2mm anti-tank gun with the APCR penetration of 135mm and the AP penetration of 105 which is still really good and also has HE rounds. And the accuracy decreases by 10 but the rate of fire stays the same in this case. And finally we have the ISU-122, just a massive, just a massive thing. I mean look at it. 200mm penetration, that is just gross and it has a really good front armor too. Yeah, this, this thing is going to be fun to play with. In the anti-air, we have some Dushkas on this truck, so a single Dushka. We have a gas AAA Maxim 4M with four of the 7.62 30 cals on a truck. We have the Zenart 37mm AA gun, definitely my favorite to use. Any of these like auto cannons are, are my favorite. They're just really good at stunning and actually killing planes. Really good range too, 2500 meters. And finally, we have the Zenart 85mm OBR-39, basically the Russian equivalent of the Flak-41. Um, really good range, really good accuracy, and it can also take down ground vehicles. In the artillery tab, we have an artillery observer, making your artillery much more accurate within that guy's influence. We have a leader unit that you can also put down into this battle group by just getting it here instead of the infantry tab. 82mm mortars. 17 rounds per minute, 3000 meters range, 4 damage, compared to the 120 mm mortar which has a low rate of fire but much longer range, better range, more damage, more suppression, more blast, you name it. It does have less shells so that's why I have usually put supplies in phase A. We have the 76.2 millimeter howitzer, basically can fire across the map, 8 rounds per minute so pretty good and it carries a lot of rounds on it and it also has AP shells if it does come into contact with enemy tanks. Pretty good to use actually. We also have the 122mm self-propelled howitzer and yeah as you can guess it just does the same thing as the 76.2mm but better in general. Um, it is actually more accurate as well so if you're more of a sniper I would go for the 120s. If you just want to suppress a range of area go for the 76. And last we have the 152mm which is actually on top of that slower at firing but it does way more damage and yeah suppression and it, it's just so good it's just so good let's just say it it does not say the accuracy for some reason i guess it just hits point blank i'm not quite sure <laughs> it doesn't say and we also have the 280 millimeter off map observer so in the air tab lots of fun things we have the il2 kr um, air recon, really fast air recon with two 23mm auto cannons on the wings. It has two 7.62mm machine guns on the wings as well and a 50 cal turret on the back. Very fast um, recon plane, good optics, medium agility, but you know, the main thing that this 
guy can do is get in there quick and get out after. We have the IL-2 M3 with the 82mm rockets, basically the same loadout as the IL-2 of previously, but it just has rockets on top of it. So um, yeah, that does decrease, actually increases the speed for some reason. That is weird. I guess it has a better engine or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. Agility is bad because it has those rockets. But one thing that I would like to see is as soon as a plane fires its rockets, that the agility goes up again. I'm not quite sure if that's possible with the engine. But um, yeah, that would be fun to see. We also have the IL-2 M3 with tank buster rockets, the 132 millimeters. It only carries four of them. So I would recommend getting these on a higher veterancy than usual. And besides that, it has the same amount of loadout that the other IL-2s have with the two autocannons, two machine guns on the wings and a 50 cal turret. IL-4 with the one ton loadout. Really scary looking plane, I really have to say. Um, it has a 50 cal turret and two machine gun turrets as well. I think on the bottom, yeah, there is one. And there's the other one. Um, yeah, pretty fast bomber. Definitely useful getting really fast bombers because, well, the enemy can't intercept you and you'll be able to get out of there um, before the enemy even gets close. So I definitely recommend getting fast bombers in your battle group. Yes, so LA-5 FN. Speaking of fast, these are really fast fighters. 610 kilometers per hour and two 20 millimeter autocannons. It's, it's going to wreck some face. And one thing that you could actually do is go for the LA-5 FN with the 100 kilogram bombs decreasing the speed of the LA-5 but not touching anything else so it is still very agile just decreases the speed and this will actually help you in some cases to, to stay behind the plane that you're engaging because every plane in this game just goes full throttle and it just doesn't let go of the throttle and you usually outrun the plane that you're actually trying to you know intercept so uh, yeah that's something to remember we also have the IL-4 with the 305 millimeter rockets instead of the bombs and those are some big jugs and those I, I I'm looking forward I'm looking forward to that one IL-2 M3 with the napalm bombs in this case napalm is definitely making an entrance into the game once again we had them with the French in Steel Division 1 now we're having them on both sides in Steel Division 2 which makes me happy so yeah that should be cool we also have the IL-4 here with the one ton loadout and 50 cal turrets and machine guns pretty much everywhere that looks awesome all right so defenses speak for themselves let's now look at our payload all right so let's see what we have here so in the recon tab we went for the ba10m for its pretty good penetration really fast on and off road speed well i should say only on on road um 45 mil on this thing is definitely going to tear some things apart even at max range with 30 percent accuracy so i went with that in phase a i went with the katie perry's in phase a as well the snape perry's in the resvetka vehicle and I also have the Mott Resvetka Infantry Recon in Phase B on mid veterancy, also in the Resvetka vehicles. I didn't go for the two man squads or the really big recon teams because one, I have plenty of infantry in the infantry tab, so I don't need to actually use my recon to, you know, assist my infantry. So I just went for the ones that have a, you know, the best possible stealth instead. In the infantry tab, I have six after Machikins in Phase A mid veterancy. Really good infantry to use at close range, but also good against any armored vehicles. We have Sapris to help with any infantry problems because of that um, TNT that they have. But they also carry loads of rifles and, and the machine gun. So together, they kind of form like this combination of things that can deal with pretty much anything. We also have some Strelke DPs. The PTRDs do a lot of like critical, you know, give a lot of critical errors to tanks. Um, if they do manage to penetrate, so definitely um, a welcome treat in the battle group. 12-man team, you get 6 of them, so that's a no-brainer. So together I have 12, 16 infantry units in phase A, um, not counting my leader. So that that is a sizable amount, and I think that will be enough even for 1v1s, um, if you're careful enough. But, you know, you could always get a little bit more or decrease the um, veterancy. In phase A, I have a three-man leader team, the Sapri Komrotis with the PPSH, and these guys carry a Panzerfaust, so that's a welcome treat as well. In phase B, we have the Sapri PPSH teams. Now, these are small assault engineers that have 
a specific role. Either try to flank around and get that enemy tank that is in there or defend and assist my after Machikis or Strelkis that I have here. So these guys won't be the frontline infantry. They'll be playing a defensive role right behind these guys. So speaking of them, in phase B I have 12 after Machikis and 12 Strelki DPs and in phase C I have Strelki DPs which I could change to the regular Strelkis to give them those machine guns um, instead because I mean that should be more than enough. But the phase C card honestly is more to just get as much infantry as possible to the front line as soon as possible. So if you are more of a breakthrough kind of person I would recommend dropping everything basically to the lowest veterancy possible because you're just going to be throwing away stuff at the enemy line anyways. In the tank tab we have those stewards, stewards the M5L light tank mid veterancy Good penetration on the AP shells and also carries HE shells and has two 30 cals on it, so that's a win. Valentine Comrati in phase A, mid veterancy. Go for the highest veterancy, you get one, so that's a no brainer. And we have this Valentine here in phase A as well, mid veterancy, 150 mil penetration. Basically, just going to position these guys somewhere where they can ambush enemy tanks instead of just fighting the enemy tanks out in the open. In the support tab we have flamethrower infantry in phase A to help with our lack of infantry and to also help in forests. They also carry smoke nades. We have the maximum machine gun, supplies in phase A and B like always and we have the um, commander unit. I didn't go for the infantry gun in this case because I probably have plenty of fire support with you know just from my infantry alone and from the artillery that I have. So in this case I didn't put that in there. In the anti-tank we went for the PTRS anti-tank team exceptional stealth so if you cut like couple of these with your recon infantry you can tear down some things apart really quickly if you don't like that remove it get in like the infantry gun instead but it all depends on you I just like to use these once in a while I have the 45 millimeter m42 anti-tank gun 100 mil penetration on the APCR 75 on the AP rounds, pretty good rate of fire, once every 5 seconds, definitely a good unit to use. And on mid veterans, so you get 6 of them in phase A. In phase B, I have the 76.2mm ZIS-3, you only get 3 of them. If you go for the lowest vet, you get 6. So this might be where you decide that you need more, well, you need quantity instead of quality. And since the accuracy is good enough on them, the way it is and since I don't really see myself pushing heavily with this battle group I'm tempted to go for the lowest vet in this case. And to help out in really late phase, in phase C I have the ISU 122s on lowest veterancy possible. Um, yeah, I just need these guys to hit once. With a 200 mil, if they hit once, they will kill. Keep a leader nearby, get him vetted up with the commander and the leader and you'll be fine. In the air tab I have two cards of 37 mil, so I have four AA guns in phase A. And this is to quickly set up an AA net. And honestly, if you have four of these, you're fine. You're golden. Like you could get three in phase B, but waiting another turn for one extra on the same veterancy, in my opinion, is not worth it. And in phase B I went for the lowest veterancy possible on these 85 mils. Um, yeah, which is just more of a buffer while these guys manage to actually take them out. In the artillery tab, we have the 120 mils mortars, phase A, mid fat. We have leaders, infantry leaders in phase B to compensate for the lack of infantry leaders there. And one more card would cost four points, whereas here it's only costing two points. We have self-propelled howitzers in phase B, 76.2 mils. We have two off-map artillery pieces, 280 mils. In phase C, we went for two cards of mid fat 152 mils. And the reason for this is they are slow firing. Thank you very much. I didn't ask that. I didn't ask it. But um, yeah, we have four of these on the mid veterancy. And since they have a really slow rate of fire, I want to fire these guys once and then probably stop firing. So with the higher veterancy, I managed to make them more accurate and since I have two cards I managed to have more of these in general and with that I actually also get to uh, the 50 points that I need. So yeah I think artillery is going to be really powerful here. In the air tab we have the Recon IL-2KR with the two 23mm autocannons on the wings. 
with the 762 millimeter machine guns on the wings as well and it also has that turret on the back the 50 cal we have the la5f without the bombs in phase a on the lowest veterancy possible so that i have something to you know fight the enemy incoming planes with and this is the only thing that we could get so i just went with it and i had some points left otherwise i would have probably removed that and um, just gone for the planes in phase b and hope my aa is good enough in phase a in phase b we have the il2 m3 with the 132 millimeter rbs rockets really good at stunning everything basically it hits it also has 223 mil basically the same other loadout as all the other planes we also have the la5 fm with the bombs in phase b because it's slightly slower so it might be able to keep in a dogfight for a little bit longer resilience is bad but it's bad on the regular la5 anyways we have the napalm bomber il2m in phase b and we have two il4s in phase c with the two tons of total payload which is just going to smash but um that was it so in the defense you know i would probably go for the regular type of things like something like that it doesn't really matter you can fill this thing up um in this case you know just uh just 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 do something it doesn't it doesn't matter like that is just insane but that was it for the 184th Strelkovi infantry battle group i hope you guys have enjoyed it um, if you do want to actually check out this battle group check out the code in the description and um, yeah as always thank you for watching and i'll see you guys back in the next video take care